What's up my brothers and my sisters from another mister. So today we're going to do a comic book review of this new mini series Spawn Unwanted Violence issue number one brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. We begin this issue with the monologue about humanity since Eve's creation, talking about Adam and Eve going biblical here, since Eve's creation, humanity has not had a single day of peace on earth. Instead, we've been in a constant battle over those conflicts and the evils we enact upon one another. The cruelty of that thought does not escape those who ache for a sense of justice. Knowing the cold nature of man has been perverse since its exception. Knowing we would taint our world, kill one another, God still created us anyway. And that constant strife, that never ending stream of sins and oppression, it could be exhausting. Especially for someone whose being can feel the emotional screams of those oppressed. Now, today, for whatever reason, Spawn is unwilling to tolerate it any further. So going back to this flashback a year ago, it's been months since Mark Rosen lost track of how long he's been inside this unknown bunker. He tries to not think about it, so he pretends he accepts what's happening to his life. The bed is perfect, like always in fact. Mark has never seen Spawn asleep, never. And Spawn turns out he freaks the hell out of Mark Rosen. What do you want? Oh, Jesus, I didn't know you were here, says Mark. I'm always here, except when I'm not. Again, for the hundredth time, Mark questions the sanity of his captor. Spawn, come on, I need to show you something. Though Mark has seen this dozen times before, Al's transformation still unnerves Mark. The freak, says Spawn. I want to know where the freak's at. What about him, says Mark. Well, he's gone. I need your help to find him. And that's a reference to Spawn issue number 300. And Mark's like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be bothered. Maybe, says Al, but I still need to find him. So in the control center, Mark tells Spawn, you may want to relax. It could take days of scouring data points and search edges to even make a guess where the freak can be at. I don't have days, says Al. Input these names. Tell me if any of them died recently. And Al Simmons reads off a half a dozen names. These are men from drug cartels, says Mark. They don't exactly go public about their lives. Then cross-reference it with the other political, military, and criminal groups, says Al. He gives Mark another list of names. With those lists of names, they come up with Lima, Peru, and this visual. And Al is like, I want the exact coordinates of what I'm looking at. And Mark is like, okay, doing that now, we should have a one mile sweep of exactly where that's located. So we go to Villa El Salvador, Peru. And <laughs> some Peruvian food does sound good right about now. 10 miles south of Lima. It's been five straight days of oppressive humidity. Temperatures nearing the century mark. The children have grown used to it by now. So everyone goes about their business and these cartel guys show up and everyone knows those who lived in that village for exactly some time knows exactly what that means. They've come for the children and they take this random girl and that grandma tries to make an attempt to save her but you know what that attempt is not going to be good enough and she goes down for the count and that child is gone. Later we see this obese drug cartel boss just yelling at someone over the phone talking about I don't care I don't answer the threats but I'll cut his head off tell him that. So his henchman brings his little girl and the obese boss is like mmm this one looks like a delicious flower prepare her so they send her to this room with the robe and he tells her to put that robe on and her name is Teresa put on that robe and the boss will be with you but before anything sinister can go down the candles something has blown them out and then we go into this panel right here where the boss goes into the room and he's like hey my girl was supposed to stay with you that bastard he is pissed and he is livid but a man in need can quickly move past his anger her robe is removed as tender kisses pepper her. This is kind of disturbing to read, man. Eventually, he wants to see the reaction in her eyes. No more mask, he says. He takes off the mask and he is very shocked at what he sees. The obese man recognizes that the young girl in front of him isn't the girl from the streets. It's his own daughter, Olivia. And the freak tells him, I went pulled too hard. I glued that tape on her real good. Unless you like her to suffer and hurt, go ahead, pull the tape off but she'll suffer like you did to the other children. And this pisses this guy off like, I'll kill you. That's my little girl. And before he go in for the punch, the freak puts him in check and tells him, you're concerned about daughters now? I want you to see something. Horrified, the man sees his wife barely alive. She knew, didn't she, says the freak, about your sickness, about your disease. And she did nothing. And he pie faces him to the ground. 
but I'm in a good mood today. So I'm only gonna kill one of you, your choice, your daughter, your wife, or you. Before a decision can be made, Spawn walks into the room and tells him, walk away from this one, Freak. I've got something more important to you. And Spawn sees Freak's anger at being interrupted. And Freak is like, and why would you do that? Because I said so, says Spawn. Cut down the woman. I've got the girl. And he uses his magic to remove the tape. And this girl goes up to her papa and they embrace each other with the hug. Spawn goes up to the Freak and says, let this fish go. You can catch him another time. Oh, says the freak, so this is how it works? I take orders from you now? Then you made a huge miscalculation. Spawn's like, I don't think so, but we can discuss this elsewhere. And he pretty much handles this like a top G. You'll like what I'm offering, says Spawn. Behind them, the human family huddles reunited, but one of them can't just seem to count his blessings. He sounds the alarm. And Freak is like, you son of a bitch. In other words, I really want the Freak to be like, you mother... But, you know, anyways, that's how I write it, but I guess the Freak don't talk like that. So across the compound, security is alerted, and the OP's boss is like, you think you could just walk out of here? No, 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 no. Not after what you did to my family. And the Freak's like, your family? Forget them, says Spawn. Let's go. Nah, says the Freak. I've just begun torturing them. I said, let's leave it alone, says Spawn. And the man is getting all prideful, like, oh, well, then you got that backwards. I haven't begun with the torture for you. And next time, I'll do it to your daughters. And this hits a nerve response because I'm sure he's thinking about Cyan. What did you say? Your evil has completely blinded you, says Spawn. Then I'll blind those around you as those guards come swarming in. And it's exactly what Spawn does. He blinds them. After Spawn blinds him, he mimics the voice of their boss. Guards, they're on the left, and the guards go to the boss, and they let it rip on him. In New York City, inside the alleyways, Spawn interrupts Freak's moment with the cockroach, and he talks about this cockroach, how women and humans like why they hate cockroaches, because they're ugly. They don't bite, cockroaches don't bite, and neither do ladybugs, but because ladybugs look cute, People are not afraid of ladybugs as, like they are cockroaches. I ain't gonna lie, cockroaches are freaking nasty, man. So Freak welcomes Spawn, and the Freak to ask Spawn, so tell me, what was so important that you had to interrupt me while I was working? And it better be real good. So Spawn tells him, there's a mission I need you to run. An ugly one that involves hundreds of children and those that love them. And the demons involved are creeping in from every direction, and I don't know who they are yet. That's where I was hoping you come in, where you'll be doing your hunting. And Freak's like, okay, so what's in it for me? If you run into any problems, I'll let you decide how to solve them. Well, things will get messy, says Freak. And Spawn's like, I know, that's why I chose you. <laughs> Meanwhile, thousands of miles to the north, there's a country where those who harbor thoughts of oppression are able to lift their voices. There's a protest going on. In a collective gathering that has played out thousands of times in the past century with a message that's been fairly consistent. One that many feel has been ignored. Thankfully, with such raw emotions laid bare, most gatherings remain peaceful until they aren't. And once the first domino falls and once somebody throws that first empty glass bottle of beer or whatever it is, others will soon follow and pandemonium will erupt. And the streets need to be cleared because there's too much violence going on. But as it happens many times throughout history, man's greatest flaw is his emotions. His emotions can quickly upend any sense of humanity. In this case, tear gas chases out most of the protesters, and this single mom holding onto her child tells her to hold tight, all in the hopes of keeping the peace. That's why they put the tear gas out there, while altering others to stay away. Now we go to this hospital in Pennsylvania, a cancer patient is in his bed resting. It's the night shift. And the only sounds are the warring machines and labored breathing from this little girl, along with the slight snores of the parents asleep at her child's bedside. Their prayers, all asking God to keep the presence of death, the Green Reaper, away from their doorways. Well, what about the freak? You forgot about the freak. Try as they might, death shall pay a visit upon all our lives in due time. Why you gotta write it like that? Hell no, nah, forget all of that. That's a cruel certainty we must accept. And the freak cuts off this little girl's name talk off her wrist. Down another hallway, this guy, this patient, is telling this funny story to this doctor. The doctor's like, man, I wish I was there, Neil. That's awesome, bro. Whatever that story is, it's left up to our imagination. And Neil tells the doctor, well, my wife didn't think it was funny, but she's a bit uptight. Well, you should get some rest. Nah, I can't do that because I got to wait six hours before my next sponge bath. He's just having a ball here and he's just flattering all the people. So who this guy is, his name is Neil Gorman, head of the science division for a biomedical conglomerate. 
they found a small dark spot on his latest x-ray, but was told it wasn't anything to worry about. They just wanted to run some tests on him. Hello, Neil, says the freak. He attempts to press the help button. It doesn't work, Neil, says the freak. Someone must have cut the wires. Minutes later, the freak tells him, hope your straps aren't too tight. Let me ask you something. Did you ever think about the damage you're going to do to the people when your company poured all those chemicals into their water supply? Or was it just for the profits that mattered? You knew those people would get sick. And this guy, Neil, is like, please take whatever you want. Oh, good. I'm gonna do that, but you're gonna help me create a diversion first. And he shows a name tag of the little girl he rips off the wrist. And the, all these beeps go down and beep, 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 beep. Code red, this guy is going into cardiac arrest. At the empty station, the freak gets to the files he came for, the terminal youth children files. While in the streets of a giant city, a different trauma is on full display. A mother tired carrying her child attempts to rest, which is interpreted as a sign of defiance. As all this tug of war is going on, all this violence is going on, the mother is separated from the child as the child tries to hold on to her own mother. The young girl is confused. She just wants to be at her mother's side. Fearing she's being abandoned and combined with that limited visibility with the tear gas, this horse comes crashing down on her and the result is heartbreaking. Everyone stops and someone yells to call an ambulance. Ignoring their own safety, others gather trying to help any way they can. Why is this happening? Because some young mother brought her daughter to a protest carrying a cardboard sign. Just a damn cardboard sign. That and the hope of making their voices be heard. And if not their voices, what about their prayers? Though after centuries of suffering, millions gave in to the doubt that even God could not hear them. So now, if their God won't intervene, the faithful may need to put their hopes in the hands of another. I guess that other is our boy Spawn, and Spawn looks at the little girl like, who? did this. He checks the injured girl while simultaneously feeling his rage grow. He knows who's behind all this. You! And before we can find out who that person is that's behind it, cops surrounding him tell Spawn to freeze and don't move a muscle. And that's where we end Spawn Unwanted Violence issue number one. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below. Let me know. I mean, at first glance, I'm in. And I'm happy that this is a short mini series, so we're going to get to this hopefully explosive and really cool conclusion in the next issue but i'm looking forward to it so if you like the content we're throwing up you know what to do like the video subscribe to rated comics here rated comics to do awesome comic book reviews comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway and also don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com for not only some really cool comic books but also some really cool and amazing rated comics exclusives to add to your comic book collection as well thank you again for watching until next time.